All right, had a lot of requests to put up another video, how to build a tow rope part two. Our first uh, video had, you know, the basic construction and concept. And, uh, you know, there's some questions about the electrical and other things and components that I can hopefully cover on this one. So nothing's really changed. But we definitely had some issues uh, that I can talk about. As you can see, the hay bale is no longer here anymore, holding holding it back. What I did was use these small little 12-inch screw piles. And you basically just screw those into the ground before the ground's frozen. And we strapped it to the frame. That's really all you need to hold it in place. It doesn't take much. Last year we didn't have a lot of snow, or else I would have done this video a bit earlier. But we did have a lot of questions about the safety switch. As you can see it here, it's that rope dangling here. It's just sitting loose, and if a, a kid or someone were to come close, what would happen is it would pull the switch and shut off. So all that is, is uh, you can get these from any of your electrical hardware stores. This is just an outdoor enclosure switch. Basically has a light switch inside of it that would look like you have in your house. Uh, and then this panel basically activates that switch on and off. It's a pretty simple concept. We haven't really had anyone come through up to this point, but just in case it would, it would shut off if anyone were to get close. Same concept here, pretty much all this electrical is um, from the local hardware store or electrical wholesale outlet. Uh, I can pull the panel off in a little bit here and take some photos of the inside. There were some questions on that. A um, few other questions on the motor. A lot of people asking what type of motor it is. I do have the serial number and some of the comments and the part number where we got it but essentially it's a two horsepower or there's a three horsepower version that looks exactly the same. The one modification we did is change it from 110 volt to 230 volt. As you see, I got it wired in over at the house. The 230 volt just seems to give it a little bit more uh, resistance to popping the breaker if you were to have too much weight on it. Uh, so I found that was important. I would recommend the three horse motor if you want to pull up a couple adults at a time. If you're just you know pulling up kids and maybe one adult at a time, the two horsepower motor is sufficient. So the one problem we had was just running the straight belt off of the outer pulley to the inner pulley, it would slip on the pinion pulley. What would happen, it would just spin and the rope would stop. Uh, so as you can see, I put these two other pulleys on the top and bottom. The top pulley mounted it right into the motor casing basically just got some bearings and the proper bolt with the shorter thread length. The bottom pulley is an adjustable pulley. Again, which I just got at a farm shop. And you can see the bottom. I just bolted it there so you could slide it back and forth and tighten up the resistance of the belt around the pinion. And what that did was prevent it from slipping anymore. We can pretty much pull as much weight as we want and the motor will stop before it slips. If I were to m change one thing from the start would be I'd probably go with a chain drive. That way you would never have slipping. Um, a little bit harder to get set up but uh, that's something I'd probably do different. Other than that, this thing kicks butt. Works great. We'll show you in some of the other videos. As far as the wiring goes, nothing's changed really, other than we've switched it from 115 to 230 volt. Everything on this unit is wired the same way that you would wire anything in your home. Um, if you do need anything specific, just let me know. I don't really have a schematic of the wiring, but um, you know, there's not, nothing too special about it. 
the one thing that we made sure we did was we wired our main power switch in with the other switch. So the power, main power switch overrides the switch. So it will not go on and off unless you have this switch on. That switch on, then this one will work, which is your safety. Um, we have some extra plugs that I put in just for ex extra lighting. Um, that light out there is basically right underneath the snow with an extension cord and we just plug it in here as needed. Okay, I wanted to show you the pulley at the bottom. We had some issues with the pulley basically falling off. Um, when someone would grab the rope too hard, it would basically make it jump. So we didn't change the pulley design at all. We didn't tighten up the rope up at all anymore. It seemed to work great. It's just if someone grabbed the rope too hard, it would pop off the pulley and it would get stuck in here. So what I did was I welded these two little just used two, some half inch uh, steel bar, bent it a little bit, welded in place so that if the rope ever falls off it just gets pushed back onto the pulley versus falling off into the edge here and causing a problem. You know, we still use the hay bales you can see, which you could use a frame, some screw piles to hold it in, maybe strap it to a snowmobile, really anything to hold it back would be would work just fine. So another thing important to note is you need to use leather gloves, deerskin gloves, some type of gloves because it'll eat up your expensive snowboarder ski gloves. We used a three quarter inch polypropylene rope, which works fantastic. That's about everything I have. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. Check out some of our other videos. How to build a tow rope part one, obviously. How to build a snow groomer, etc. Thanks for watching.